All right, we're going to talk about color. Color is the element of art derived from reflected light. And the word hue is basically the same thing as color. It's, a, it, you know, you ask what, what color is that shirt? It's red. What hue is that shirt? It's red. It's the same thing. It's just a, a different name. It's kind of like the difference between uh, calling somebody a person or calling somebody a human. Uh, one is just a more of a technical term for that. And then uh, the color spectrum is when you uh, shine a light into a um, like a, a prism and then you get all the different colors that come out of it. That's the color spectrum, all those colors. It goes from red to uh, purple. So this is how color works. Objects absorb some waves of light and reflect others. So this is uh so light will shine on an object so sunlight is shining on a an apple and all the colors that are in the light are shining on that apple and then the apple absorbs all of the waves of light except for red and it reflects red so an apple really isn't red it's it's reflecting red light that's why it looks like a color to us all right, let me introduce you to the color wheel, which is a street, a spectrum of light bent into a circle. Uh, circle wheels take all kinds of shapes and forms, but generally they are in circular shape. But uh, there are some people are a little bit more creative with the uh, color wheel. Uh, but, you know, this is basically a color wheel. Uh, and then value is how light or dark something is. And the second definition of value is white and black and all the grays in between. So black and white photography has no color in it. Black is not a color. White is not a color. Gray is not a color. They are values, not colors. And so when you are looking at black and white photos, then you're looking at, at uh, photos without any color. Some artists will work in values only. So, for example, Picasso painted this picture of Guernica using only blacks and whites and grays. Uh, there's a an artist named Cheryl who uses uh, values as the skin tone of the figures that she paints. And Enriquez uses the values in the skin tones of the uh, figures that he paints as well. When you add white to a color, it's la adding a light value of a color. So uh, adding white to red makes it pink, but basically that's just light red. Adding black to a color creates the dark value of a color. So this is a color wheel using uh, tints and shades. Now, if a shade, if the value change is gradual, then you have a very calm feeling. So if you look at this painting by Monet, uh, this all has very similar values in it, and they all come from this section of the color wheel. But if you look at this Caravaggio painting, it has very bright highlights and very dark shadows. And so it, it, it creates these values from the different opposite sides of the uh, value scale. And we're going to look at in the intensity of color. Intensity is how bright or dull a color is. I'm a fan of Ted Nugent's music. And so uh, he has one album that's called Intensities in Ten Cities which I think is a very clever pun on the word intensity. But uh, a high intensity color is the pure hue. It's the, this drawing or this painting that we have above uses the pure colors. But a low intensity painting or low intensity colors are more muted and more dull colors. So this uh, painting by uh, this, this altarpiece by Van Eyck, uh, it has very uh, toned down colors when it's closed. But when you open it up, it has very bright or high intensity colors. And the futurists like to paint with high intensity colors. And there are some artists that love to paint with high intensity colors. These are just very bright colors straight out of the tube of paint and very uh, uh, bright and intense. Uh, Kandinsky uses intense colors. Raphael uses high intensity colors. And Mark, Franz Mark, uses high intensity colors. Jasper Johns uses intensity colors. And Rothko uses high intensity colors for a lot of his artworks. He also uses low intensity colors, but these images that we see in front of us are high intensity colors. 
And then uh, Lichtenstein and Mondrian use the uh, primary colors as very intense colors. Uh, Audrey Flack uses intense colors. Gauguin uses intense colors. Monet uses intense colors. Degas and Delaunay use, it, use intense colors. Fouquet uses tense colors. And then low intensity colors are very grayish and lots of grays and browns. So you can see here on the left, uh, Edward Vuillard and then Van Gogh on the right have very low intensity colors, very dull colors. And, you know, this painting by Gauguin had, uses very dull colors. Uh, Courbet's painting uh, uses dull colors. Courbet, and then another painting by Courbet using dull colors. The Malay color, you know, because I can see the, the red and the blue and the green that they're wearing, but they're very low intensity. Uh, this Degas painting using low intensity colors. The Fuseli painting, low intensity colors. You know, that even has the red in the background, but it's a low intensity red. All right, the Bala painting uses low intensity colors. El Greco using low intensity colors. All right, the primary hues are, they cannot be made from other colors. So we have red, we have yellow, and we have blue. And a primary triad is when you use them all together. So right here, this is a primary triad. We see the red, the yellow, and the blue in this painting. Uh, this Poussin uses the primary triad of the red and the yellow and the blue. Those colors really stand out in this picture. Uh, the red on the lipstick, the blue and the yellow of the hat stand out and create a primary triad. Another Poussin painting using the uh, intense colors of the primaries. The red and the yellow and the blue are, are intense here. Mark's colors using uh, the, the primary colors. Kandinsky used the primary colors. Gorky used the primary colors. Flack used the primary colors. There's a lot of red, there's some blue, and then there's some yellow in this. So, and, and um, you know, there's a little bit of the green, but, and, but pretty much this is a, uh, a primary triad painting. And then Lichtenstein and Mondrian used pretty much uh, the primary colors. And then secondary colors are made from two primaries mixed together. So we have uh, blue and red mixed together to get purple, red and yellow mixed to get orange and yellow and blue mixed to get green. OGP like stands for original gangsta pimp wearing orange, green, and purple. So uh, like a secondary painting, uh, a painting that uses secondary colors would look like this one. I could see some purple in the, in the mountains in the distance, lots of green foliage, and then the, the orange being the dirt on the ground. But there's very few paintings that I could find in the semester that highlight these uh, these secondary colors. Here's a, a former student of mine that painted with secondary colors. All right, and then the intermediate hues are the colors that are uh, mixed with a primary and a secondary mixed together. Yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, blue, purple, red, purple, and red, orange. Monochromatic means tints and shades of one color. So Picasso's blue period, he painted pretty much with one color of that being blue. He used light blue, dark blue, medium blue, and had these images that are monochromatic. Aaron Douglas uses monochromatic paintings. It's all tints and shades of one color. Boccioni uses monochromatic color scheme in this painting. And complementary colors are opposite colors on the color wheel. For example, blue is the opposite of orange. And mixing a color with its complement dulls it and lowers the intensity. If you're mixing uh, red and green together, it makes muted and dull colors. So we're using, uh, looking at artworks that use complementary colors. Artists use to do this a lot to increase the contrast and catch the eye. They'll often put colors next to each other that are opposite on the color wheel. For example, you can see the green dress uh, contrasts with the red in the background. Same here with Frida Kahlo, red and green are contrasting. The red and green on the Raphael painting. <coughs> the pink, which is light red, and the greens uh, contrasting in the Fragonard painting. 
and then blue and orange contrast. So uh, we have the this morning sunrise and we have that blue sky and the orange sunlight and that creates this blue orange complementary color scheme. Uh, Gauguin and uh, use the the orange on the skin tones and blue as the background. Uh, the skin tone is basically like orange. So uh, if you add white to orange, it makes this um, uh, peachy color. If you add black to orange, it makes a brown color. So uh, skin tone is like a very orange kind of color and with this uh, background of the blues and the orange of the skin, we have this orange blue uh, complementary color. The sunset with the sky creates an orange and blue. Uh, the red hair and the blue background creates this orange blue complementary colors. The sunset and the sky creates an orange blue complementary color. All the skin tones and the blue sky creates an orange blue complementary. And then with uh, yellow and purple, we have this bacon painting that uses the purple of these uh, the robes and the yellow of the brass as a complementary color. Then with analogous colors, these are colors that sit side by side on the color wheel. So uh, this painting by Cezanne uses these colors of the color wheel that are all together from blue all the way through green and then to uh, this orangey color. Uh, that sit side by side on the color wheel. This painting by Van Gogh is, is uh, uh, analogous because it has these, these warm uh, colors going from green to orange. And it, you know, it's so that the painting is primarily warm. There's just a little bit of the cool color of the green, but it does sit next to these other colors on the color wheel. Warm colors are things that you think of things that are warm, like the warm sunlight, a warm campfire, the red hot uh, uh, stove. Uh, so yellow and orange and red are seen as warm colors and they suggest warmth and appear to advance towards the viewer. That's all these colors from yellow to red. And when I say they, they uh, jump out and grab the viewer's attention, that's why uh, so many signs or road signs are in warm colors to grab your attention. Also with um, uh, advertising and uh, especially these fast food chains use a lot of warm colors, a lot of reds and yellows in their advertising to get your attention. So when we look at paintings that have little spots of warm color, the, it's those those little spots of warm color that really jump out and get our attention. The yellow that is on the uh, fabric. And uh, the, the red fabric here and the red uh, uh, outfit here and the red tunic, you know, they, they really pop out and get your attention. And here, this overall painting is very warm. Uh, like I said, the, the sunflowers are very warm. This Degas painting is very warm. The Gauguin painting is very warm. You can see, even see the fire here, but it gives off this warm light. Uh, you can see the fire here giving off that warm light. And here's a lot of pinks that are, that's light red, which is a warm color. Uh, this Krasner painting is very warm with the pinks and the oranges. This Newman painting is just screams red and it's very warm. The flak painting is very warm. Cool colors. Think of things that are cool, like the cool grass under your feet, the cool pool in the summertime, and then uh, the cool mountains in the distance. These suggest coolness and sem seem to recede into the distance. So this right here is a very cool painting with the, the, um, the greens and the blues and the purples. <clears throat> so sometimes artists will use these cool colors, like El Greco focuses on the blues and the greens of this. It's a very cool painting. Uh, the Severini painting, there's, it has mostly cool colors, very few warm colors, but you know, the, even the steel has a very blue tint to it. Uh, this is a very cool painting right here where, you know, we have a lot of uh, values, but it mostly it's the blues and the greens that show up. Uh, this Monet painting is all cool colors. 
If you want something to grab a viewer's attention, give it some warm colors and surround it with cool colors. For example, if you look at these two boats, you know, which one did you see first? So my students typically say it's the orange one that they saw first because it grabs their attention. So it, it, artists will use this. So it's the warm stars in the sky surrounded by the blue that are um, that grab the viewer's attention. And I've even used this in my own art. So uh, I did this um, mural for uh, uh, the, the police department and I used a warm lettering surrounded by a cool background. And I did this painting for uh, my school and I did uh, a warm lettering with a cool background. So if you want something to grab a viewer's eye attention, give us some warm colors and surround it with cool colors. But I see a lot of what artists do is they surround it with neutral colors or dull colors. All right. And that's what's happening in these pictures. The, the little spots of warm color really kind of pop out. And then I also will expand that idea to if you want something to grab a viewer's attention, give it an intense color. So it doesn't even have to be warm anymore, but like these intense blues kind of pop out and get your attention because what's surrounding is dull or neutral. And then optical color is very realistic color. So a lot of artists will work in very these very realistic colors. And then arbitrary is imaginative or creative color. And we get that a lot with modern art. So uh, this Warhol picture, Marilyn Monroe did not have red skin like that. And the Durain, you know, that is uh, the, the pink mountains and the green uh, uh, bay and the yellow sky, very, very imaginative, not realistic at all. So artists will use these, these odd colors to uh, grab your attention and, uh, and also possibly to express things, you know, and then this Gauguin image on the left, whether Jacob is wrestling with the angel, you know, he's on the, the ground. Well, where's their red ground like that? But it's to get your attention. Uh, Van Gogh and the modern artists will often use these, these garish colors uh, for some uh, reason uh, or another. Uh, they're using bright colors like blue horses. That's the, there aren't any blue horses. And when two colors come into contact, their differences increase. So yellow green surrounded by yellow looks greener and yellow green surrounded by green looks yellower. And, and these two squares, they look like different colors, but they're actually the same. I copy pasted them. The one on the left looks greener. The one on the right looks yellower. But when I put them together, they're the same color. And Seurat definitely used this. He used pure colors and then he would put them next to each other to make them look different. So he used that system of uh, putting the, having colors react to each other. And then for tonality is when one color dominates an artwork and Motley is definitely a, an expert at this. So this painting is definitely uh, uh, dominated by reds and red purples. This one is dominated by the blue greens. And this one is dominated by blue purples and uh, red purples. All right, that'll be the end of color and that'll be it.